An oil spill off the coast of Orange County is making its way towards San Diego County beaches. Good evening. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. Shoreline assessment teams walked beaches today in Oceanside and Carlsbad where tar balls were found on shore. As News 8's David Gobertson reports, no San Diego beaches have been closed, but a state of emergency could be coming soon. Uh, we do know and have observed and seen oil slicks that are making their way south uh, towards San Diego County. These tar balls found in Oceanside triggered the county to open its emergency operations center and assessment teams hit the beaches, collecting more tar balls suspected but not confirmed to be from the oil spill in Orange County. The tar balls will be tested and if they did come from the oil spill, the county will take further action. If these tar balls are tied back to the oil spill in Orange County, uh, at that point, as a county, we would declare a local state of emergency to better be able to access state and federal funds. Already, the county has started deploying booms at rivers and lagoons to keep the oil out in case it does reach our local shorelines. So far, no local beaches have been closed, but people are concerned. I hope that we're south, we're far enough south that we're not gonna, we're not gonna see anything and we'll be safe enough from it. But yeah, it was a concern when we were coming out here. NOAA uses satellites to track the major blob of oil as it moves down the coast. But small chunks of tar are hard to pick up, and that's why deploying feet on the ground and testing the tar is the best way to keep track of where the oil is headed. I'm glad they're here. Preventive medicine is always the best policy, you know. Those assessment teams will be back on the beaches this weekend walking, looking for tar and looking for oil as that spill does continue to make its way down the coast south towards us. Carla? David, I understand those booms are also being deployed to protect the Poseidon desalination plant in Carlsbad. What is the danger there? Uh, yes, Nathan Fletcher brought that up in the news conference today. He says there's great concern that the oil could get into the plant and clog it up and they might have to shut it down. So they're taking all the necessary precautions to put the booms out to block any potential oil from getting into that desalinization plant. Right, important effort there. David Gobertson reporting live. Thanks, David. To the issue, a storm is headed our way, and that could push some of that oil farther down the coast. And you've probably seen those dark clouds lingering all day as well. Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis is in with an early look at what's ahead tonight. Carlene? Some wet weather. That's what we're expecting later on tonight. We see more cloud cover than anything else. Now, we did have a few light showers that were right along the coastal mountain slopes for today and squeezed out a little bit less than a tenth of an inch of rainfall, but we have a lot more rain that's on the way. I want to go ahead and set the clock in motion, so we are looking at those light chances around 11 p.m. So during the 11 p.m. hour and then all the way into the rest of tonight becomes more widespread and you're talking light to moderate rainfall around 3 a.m. You're going to be having those uh, scattered showers as well as some downpours. You're seeing that near uh, Chula Vista as well as Escondido. Also seeing some activity as we go into tomorrow morning, still holding on to those chances. And then by the afternoon hours, that's when we start to dry out. So we'll break everything down coming up in your complete forecast. Marcella. Homeowners across San Diego County are seeing their fire insurance rates rise dramatically. In some cases, people are getting dropped from their plans altogether. In this Your Stories report, News 8's Shannon Handy spoke to a Descanso man dealing with sticker shock after seeing his estimate this year. He emailed us for help. She looks into the problem and why it's happening. Marvin Evans has lived in this Tiscanza home for 12 years, and this is the most he's ever had to pay for homeowners insurance. Between 2020 and 2021, his premium went up by 260%. What was your initial reaction? Horror. <laughs> Marvin Evans did not hold back I mean, when discussing how much more he'll be paying for homeowners insurance this year. I know it's true that they have to raise rates, but raising rates two and a half times is exorbitant. It went from $1,744 on my California fair plan to about 4,500. The California fair plan is a state run insurance program designed as a last resort for those who can't get coverage elsewhere. Despite no recent major fires in his area, Evans is one of hundreds of thousands of Californians dropped from traditional insurance companies due to a rise in fires statewide. 
California fair plan rates are based on what fire protection class your home falls under. The higher the number, the higher the risk. In 2016, Evans received this letter from San Diego County Fire, letting him know his class went from a 9 to a 3, in part because a fire station was built closer to his home. That made his premium drop. But last month, he received this letter from the California Fair Plan saying his class went back to a nine with no explanation as to why. I asked my agent and he said, anybody on a well is gonna be a nine. Turns out Evans isn't alone. The rates are gonna to continue to go up. Aaron Farmer is an agent with Jump Insurance Services. He says as fires get worse and homeowners continue getting dropped from their plans, the California Fair Plan is taking on more policies and in turn more risk. They're increasing their exposure tremendously and I think they realize that they have got to charge the appropriate rate for the risk. Aside from increased fire risk, Farmer says another contributing factor to higher rates has to do with the housing market. Based on the values of homes today with where the market is, many people have much more equity than they've ever had. So what, if anything, can be done? For starters, farmers suggest working with an agent familiar with the California Fair Plan, saying misinformation can cost you big time. An agent can quote something today with the California Fair Plan and, and not put in exactly the correct information, which may give an artificially low premium to the homeowner. And once it's validated, later, meaning they check to see that there isn't a fire hydrant right outside and a fire department is not within five miles, they're going to adjust the rate. As for Evans, he plans on writing a letter to his state representatives no about the issue. The Beyond that, he just wants others to be aware so they're prepared for the sticker yeah. shock unlike he was. And there are plenty of people around who are living paycheck to paycheck. The situation is very dire. Jenna Handy, News 8. A new military investigation found the pandemic curtailed training in 2020 and that contributed to nine service members drowning off our coast. The sinking of an amphibious assault vehicle off San Clemente Island in July of 2020 was one of the Marine Corps' deadliest training accidents in years. A previous investigation found it was caused by inadequate training, shabby maintenance and poor judgment by commanders. This latest probe looked at troop readiness. Younger kids could start getting the COVID-19 vaccine as early as next month. Pfizer today asked the FDA for emergency use authorization for its vaccine for kids 5 to 11 years old. There are concerns from some parents that there hasn't been enough time to study the vaccine's long-term effects in children. A local infectious disease expert says research shows that it is safe and that not getting one is a big risk. They add that parents shouldn't assume their child won't have complications if they contract COVID. We don't know what happens to kids after they've gotten infected. Maybe they get infected and they do great. It looks like it's just a great cold. But a year, two years, three years down the line, what, what, hap what are the consequences there? If regulators approve Pfizer's request, shots could begin within a matter of weeks. <laughs> A World War II veteran committed himself to making sure Americans never forgot the greatest generation. 102-year-old Sidney Walton spent the last years of his life traveling the United States, meeting Americans, governors, and even presidents. News 8's Abby Alford is live to share the inspiration behind his legacy. Abby? Carlo and Marcella, Sidney Walton was inspired to start his 50 state no regrets tour while he was on his trip with Honor Flight San Diego, a nonprofit that sends World War II veterans to Washington, D.C. to visit their memorials. He had realized that when he was younger, he'd never met a Civil War veteran, and he wanted to make sure that Americans have the opportunity to meet the greatest generation. A police escort from Los Angeles to El Camino Cemetery in Sorrento Valley for 102-year-old World War II veteran Sidney Walton, where he was laid to rest next to his wife. I dreamt that we were going to the funeral, and uh, and my, my, my dad was alive. He was getting out of the car, but I was the only one that could see him alive. Surrounded by his three children and family and friends, they remember the veteran for his service to his country. I want everyone to remember my father who 
truly saved our country. At age 21, Walton enlisted in the Army just eight months before the Pearl Harbor attack. He served in the Pacific Theater of War as a corporal medical technician. When he returned from the war, he married Rena and eventually married and moved their family from Massachusetts to San Diego. My dad had many chapters, and one of them was advice dad. But he was a man of few words, too. But his words carried. Over the years, Walton met famous people and dignitaries and was an honored guest at many national and military events. But his greatest accomplishment was starting the 50 state No Regrets Tour, making sure that as many Americans had the opportunity to meet a World War II veteran before they were gone. That was how he spent the rest of his life, is making sure that there was awareness of the World War II veterans and all of the veterans and what they did. Sidney Walton's service to his country and his commitment to the memory of the greatest generation will never be forgotten. But Dad was such a humble man. He didn't go out to be a hero. Last week, Corporal Walton traveled to his 40th state meeting the governor of Oklahoma just five days before he died. His family wants to continue his legacy and finish the tour. With only 10 states remaining, they still need your help. Go to our website at cbs8.com and click on the help button.